In this short video, I will demonstrate how to use Excel 2007 to convert your titration data and your calculated slope values into graphs. Now I'm going to assume that you've already got your fluid volume column and your pH column from your titration and you've already calculated your slope values as I showed in a previous video. The next thing you want to do is make your titration curve. And the way you do that is first you pick the x value of your plot, which will be fluid volume for a titration curve. Then you can hold on the sh control key and click on the column with your y values, which is pH for a titration curve. Once you've done that, then the two columns have been selected and you can insert a graph. So go up here, and right now we're in the home menu at the top. If you go over and click on insert, you'll see you have an option for a scatter plot. Click on the button there for scatter. I'm going to choose a graph that does points with no lines connecting them. And you see instantly it provides you with a plot. And I can grab the corner of that and make it a little bit bigger. So this is a plot of my titration curve. It has my data. It's not very well formatted, but it's got my data, data there. Remember the, the pH jumped at the beginning and then it was pretty much smooth. And then you had a little S-shaped uh, jump in pH here where the end point was reached and then it smoothed out again. We need to do some formatting on this. Uh, first, I don't have X or Y labels on the axis, so I'm going to go up to Layout and I can go over to Axis Titles. I'll click on that and I'll tell it I want a title below the axis for the horizontal axis and I want a vertical axis title and it puts in little dummy titles there. Now I can do some editing on those. Well, First of all the title of this graph is going to be Titration Curve For sample one, my x axis, remember, was the fluid volume column. So I'm going to edit that to say volume of added base with units of milliliter. My y axis is simply pH. There. Uh, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the scale of the axes. If you notice, my data really only occupies about a third of the horizontal, half or a third of the horizontal axis, and and there's all the space over here where there's nothing. So um, first, I'm going to click on one of the numbers in the horizontal axis on my on my x-axis, and that'll select that axis. Then I'll right-click and on that axis and it gives me these options here and I can do things like format the axis. So I'll click on that. None of my data really goes past 25 milliliters so I'm going to change the maximum value on the graph to 25 so we don't have all that dead space at the, at the end of it. And then my data doesn't go below 4 or above 12 in pH, so I'm going to make the minimum value of my, X, of my Y axis 4 and make the maximum value of my Y axis 12. So again, click on a number here, right click on the axis, you get the option. I want to change my minimum value to 4, my maximum value to 12. Much better now see what's going on here. If I want, I can click on the, the points themselves. And if I right-click on that now, I should get the ability to format my data series. And I can do things like change the markers. Right now there's these big diamonds in there, but 
I'm going to turn off of automatic and I'm going to make those points a little bit smaller. Here's my graph. It's a graph where the data points take up the majority of the graph. Its eight axes are labeled as a title. Now I can just print out this one page, this first page of the titration curve Excel spreadsheet. There's one of my curves. I, I just deleted that one. I just clicked on the curve and hit the delete button because now I want to make a second graph. I'm going to do slope of the curve versus the fluid volume. So I clicked on fluid volume. I'll hold on control. Click on my Y values. Now the first and the third axes are clicked on and I will insert a scatter plot. This time it's showing the slope values and again I can do things like change my axes. Uh, this beginning part of a titration is always a big jump in pH but that's not your end point. Your end point remember is over, is over in your basic um, pH is where you get that S-shaped curve so this is going to be identifying where the end point is. So I'm going to make the maximum value on my y-axis to, so I'm going to change that like I changed it before maximum value to I'm going to change the maximum value of my x-axis and bring that like I did before to 25 and I can see very easily here that there is a place where the slope increases quickly which is a maximum value and if I put my cursor right over that maximum point there I can see that the highest slope has a slope of 1 and its X value or volume of base added is 18.94 milliliters so for this titration the end point is at 18.94 milliliters of added base which is the most important piece of information I'm trying to get from this titration curve. I can then add axes I can put the axis labels, so let's, I can go to layout like before, tell it I want axis labels I can edit the axis labels, this time my y-axis is the slope of the titration curve my x value is the same it's the volume I've added base in milliliters. I'm going to change the label, the title of the graph, and say slope of titration curve. And there I have it. I've got my plot, and I can plot this one out now. And I can note the point where I have the highest slope because that will be the end point of the titration. There you have it, making plots from your titration data.